We've taken a fairly thorough look at the Shuey approximation. Now we're going to take a look at a couple additional approximations, the Aki Richards and Bortfeld approximations. The Aki Richards uh, formulation you'll find in, in different forms uh, shown here. Uh, this is probably the most explicit form where you have the compressional wave velocities in the, uh, in this case it would be the, the sand and this would be the shale overlying shale, uh, V1, V2 minus V1 over the average of the compressional wave velocities and of course the twos would cancel out. So this is basically the reflection coefficient. Uh, same thing here for the shear wave velocities and this um, Brian Russell would refer to this as, as I, I believe kind of an equivalent uh, reflection coefficient uh, for densities. And uh, so this kind of a notation is fairly straightforward. I think it's easily recognizable by most of us. But you'll also find substitution of alpha for compressional wave velocity and beta for the shear wave velocity, usually with the subscripts for indicating which uh, medium, one, two, shale, sandstone, whatever. Uh, these are often replaced with alpha and beta, but alpha and beta by themselves in this expression are used to represent the averages. So we can rewrite this equation in this form where we have the uh, angular dependent uh, reflection coefficient equal to 1 half 1 plus 10 squared theta delta alpha over alpha. Again, alpha is the average P wave velocity. Delta alpha is just the difference in the P wave velocities and so on. Delta beta over beta for the shear wave terms and delta rho over rho for the uh, density terms. And here we can also note that 1 plus tan squared of theta is equal to 1 over cosine squared of theta. And so we can even further kind of simplify this expression uh, writing it as we see it down here. And a good reference for this would be uh, Hilterman's uh, SEG Distinguished uh, Instructor Series number 4. So the Aki Richards uh, formulation, you know, as we as we mentioned, we simplify these terms of the notation. We change the notation uh, from VP2 minus VP1 over the average value of P to delta alpha over alpha, alpha delta beta over beta, delta rho over rho for these three terms. And we rewrite the expression as shown here. Now, uh, Brian Russell in, his, uh, in the uh, 2010 Milton Dobrin uh, lecture, he writes this as um, the angular dependence of the reflectivity as being uh, A, which is basically going to be 1 over 2 times the cosine squared of theta times the P wave reflection coefficient plus B, all of this, times the shear wave reflection coefficient plus C, this term, times the density reflection coefficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to compare the Aki Richards uh, linearization to the three-term Shuey approximation. We'll also compare it to Ostrander. We've been using Ostrander as a kind of a benchmark. This was uh, Ostrander's 1984, a result from Ostrander's 1984 paper. And just kind of making that comparison here, you can see just taking a look at the um, a VR, DR equal 1.25 curves that we have a crossover using the Aki Richards response, which is, uh, oh, about 28 and a half uh, here, probably about 37. And uh, for the Poisson's ratio 0.3 in the shale and 0.1 in the sand, this dashed curve over here, we can see that it extends on out. It does rise above, but it crosses zero around 31. Over here, it doesn't quite cross zero until around 40. So just some obvious differences between the Aki Richards uh, response and the responses that are presented by Ostrander. We can see um, that these um, dashed line responses for Poisson's ratio of 0.3 in the shale and 0.1 in the sand are converging um, much more so for the Aki Richards response than they do in the Ostrander paper.
Now over here we're comparing the uh, Shuey approximation to the Aki Richards approximation. And again, you can, you can see where we've got a zero crossing here on the, uh, uh, for the solid line, which is for Poisson's ratios of 0.4 in the shale and 0.1 in the sand, and the dashed lines, 0.3 in the shale and 0.1 in the sand. The <clears throat> uh, solid line is crossing here at about 31, crosses over here around, I uh, got my arrow off around uh, 29, so the, so a little bit of difference there, and um, uh, the zero crossing on the 0 0.3, 0 0.1, um, Poisson ratio distribution is around 32 over here and about 36 over here. So we can see those differences. We can also see that the uh, Poisson ratio curves for the different velocity distributions for Poisson's ratios of 0.3 and 0.1 uh, tend to pinch and cross for the Aki Richards approximation, but are uh, converging, but still. Um, uh, have a good separation here for the three-term Shuey approximation. So the three-term Shuey approximation is probably a little bit more like the uh, Ostrander case. Now over here what we're doing is we're looking at the Borfeld, Bor Bortfeld approximation over here on the left, and then this is the Aki Richards approximation on the right. Um, the Bortfeld approximation, we can see Again, these zero crossings are a little bit different. Uh, you know, just taking these uh, solid, the upper solid and dashed curve for these different Poisson ratio assignments, and we get a crossing here at about uh, oh 20, 27 or so, and then if we come over here, we're getting a crossing at about uh, uh, 28. So these are pretty close together. This crosses zero at about uh, 32 over here. Uh, also about, you know, with haven't labeled it quite properly, but also around 32. So in that sense, these are quite similar, at least looking at the two upper curves, although we do see this pinching over here for the Poisson ratio distribution 0 0.3, 0 0.1, that we, it's much more pronounced than it is for the Bortfeld approximation. Now when we take a look at the long offsets, we see this kind of drop uh, for both Poisson ratio uh, differences here, 0.4 and 0.1 and 0.3 and 0.1 for the dashed lines, where the Poisson, Poisson ratio drops down to a minimum and then begins to dramatically uh, increase in value. We see that in both the Aki Richards and in the Bortfeld uh, approximation. Now the Aki Richards, as we saw in the previous two comparisons, it tends to pinch out and we can see where that pinching, uh, where, where all the lines, all the responses for the 0.3.1 Poisson ratio distribution come together here around 50 degrees and then they just uh, diverge dramatically as we get up to around 54, 55 degrees. We see this kind of divergence also in the Bortfeld approximation, uh, but they don't really pinch together as they did over here for the Aki Richards uh, approximation at, at the longer offsets. So this long offset uh, response here is does indicate uh, a significant rise for the same terms. Uh, 0.3.1 and 0.4.1, but to a different degree, uh, depending on which approximation that you're using. Now the Bortfeld um, approximation can be broken up into a fluid term and a rigidity term, and I think that you can see the fluid term here is a function of the p-wave velocities and, and the densities, and, and of course you the relationship of this to fluid is that the compression wave velocity will change significantly depending upon whether the porosity is filled with fluid or not, fluid or gas, as will the densities. The density is going to change significantly if the rock is filled with uh, gas or, um, or fluid such as water. Now the uh, shear term, 
the rigidity term. Uh, the shear wave velocities are generally uh, associated with changes in Poisson's ratio. And you'll recall that changes in, um, uh, changes in the shear wave velocity are not influenced by the presence of fluids, gas or, or water. So this term over here with the shear wave velocities in uh, these two terms, uh, in addition to the density, is um, more reflective of the rigidity of the of the rock, and so we can plot up these uh, three terms. We can plot up the combination of terms here, the total, and then we can plot the fluid and the rigidity term separately. And uh, here we're we're looking at a case with 100% water saturation, and you can see the fluid term by itself. We see an increase with uh, offset. Uh, the rigidity term we see decreases with uh, offset and the total uh, starts out begins to decrease and then we see that uh, uh, that it's beginning to rise as we uh, uh, did before here in these in these uh, representations that we just looked at so this is for 100 percent water saturation over here on the right this is for 100 percent gas saturation we have Poisson's ratios of 0.378. The Poisson ratio in the shale didn't change. Uh, the Poisson ratio in the sand, because of the presence of gas, is much less, so it's much more rigid. So we see the rigidity term here. The fluid term, uh, we see much less of a rise. Uh, the re rigidity term and the total term seem to track each other uh, much more so than the uh, uh, much, much more closely than they do over here for 100% water saturation. So we can we can do this with a lot of the um, a lot of the approximations, and we'll we'll also take a look at the uh, Aki Richards, and we'll break that down into its parts uh, next time around. But we but we just want to note that uh, this bright spot analysis, which came into vogue uh, in the late 60s and through the 70s. Just, um, you know, it's important to note that it did contribute, it did contribute significantly to the success ratio or, uh, you know, of uh, wildcat gas wells. And uh, so it was a useful method of interpretation and prospect identification. However, Ostrander notes that these anomalies could be caused by gas cum accumulations that were subcommercial, and we've talked about that uh, when we talked about Domenico, Domenico's paper back in 1974. He shows that with just a, a few percent gas saturation that you can produce a large decrease in the uh, compressional wave velocity, which is going to give you an amplitude anomaly for a subcommercial um, concentration of gas. And and um, he also noted that many amplitudes and many amplitude anomalies were not caused by gas accumulation. And the AVO response is a good way to distinguish between those that are associated with gas and those that are non-gas related. So if you have a uh, clam bed, for example, you may have a nice bright spot, you might have a nice uh, anomaly, but the AVO response will be entirely different for the uh, clam shell bed than it will be for a gas sand. And so AVO then begins to tell us the difference between sands that responses that may be gas related and those that may not be. And um, of course the effects of gas remember cause a significant drop in Poisson's ratio. And as we saw in the uh, you know with the Bortfeld approximation it, it kind of in, we're, we're increasing the influence of the rigidity term, and um, uh, so this this you know this this um, association with the different terms that we illustrated using the Bortfeld approximation is, is just one way to kind of dissect the uh, response as a function of offset and uh, uh, significance of the individual terms. So the next time we're going to take a look at uh, another formulation of the Aki Richards equation and we'll be talking about the Aki Richards uh, equation and um, developing ideas related to the slope intercept 
method of interpretation. So thanks for joining us, and we'll hope to see you next time.